Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video we'll be talking uh, about this concept of semaphores. So I think in the previous video I've given a very brief introduction about semaphores. In this video we will see what are semaphores in a bit more detail. We'll also talk about the types of semaphores and we'll also try to understand it with an everyday example. So yeah, let's get started. So semaphores, uh, we know that this is nothing but it's like a normal integer. So you can maybe uh, consider semaphores as uh, some kind of software tools which are available uh, to us so that we can actually achieve the concept of process synchronization. So the process synchronization, it can be achieved, we have seen that it can be achieved by something called mutex locks. We have also seen that it can be achieved through some hardware based instructions. Uh, we have seen that uh, there was test and set and compare and swap. Apart from these two, we also have something called semaphores. So, so semaphores is nothing but, uh, these are just a software tool to help us achieve process synchronization. Now what these are, these are nothing but some integer variables. Uh, we'll call it, let's say S. So it is just an integer variable using which we can somehow achieve process synchronization. And it has like two atomic functions called weight and signal. So based on these two atomic functions, we can achieve uh, process synchronization. So we will see how this weight and signal is kind of implemented and how we can achieve process synchronization using those two. Let's just get rid of this. Okay, uh, so let's talk about weight first. So the function weight, it is on the semaphore, let's call it S. So this is like, there is a while loop and we just check if it is less than or equal to zero. If yes, then it is going to go in a busy wait loop. And if not, we will just increment this value. And then there is signal where we just decrement the value. No, I'm sorry, this is negative and this is positive. Okay, so weight is like, uh, so there is this integer semaphore, so what we are doing is, we just wait for this value, uh, we, we just see if the value is less than or equal to 0, if yes, then we keep waiting. If not, we decrease the value of s by 1. And signal, we just increase the value of by 1. We will see how this is actually going to be helpful and how we can actually achieve process synchronization using this. Now I think for that, maybe we will just go through some examples. So let's talk about a case where, uh, let's say there is one toilet and outside there is a door. Let's just assume there is a door and we kind of have a key. So the key is kind of like it's outside and if it is available, any person who let's say wants to use the toilet, he can just go check if the key is available. If yes, he'll just take the key and then enter, do his work and then, uh, so if he is, if there is any person inside, then that means the key would not be available here because he would have actually taken it, gone inside and then the key would be with him. Now, if any other person comes, then he will again have to check if the key is available. If the key is not there, then this person cannot enter because this means that there is someone already inside our toilet. So this is nothing but our critical section. Uh, and once the person is like done with his work, he comes out. So when he comes out, he'll just hang the key uh, and then he'll just come out. So if the key is now present, the other person wanting to enter, he'll just see if the key is available. If yes, he can then enter. He'll take the key with him so that he can log from inside. So that way, if we look at this example, uh, yeah, if we try to relate it with the technical terms, the toilet is nothing but the critical section here. Your key is actually the semaphore value. So this is your semaphore. Key is nothing but your semaphore. And the person here would be a process. So this is nothing but a process. And Toilet is nothing but, yeah, as we've already seen, this is just the critical section. So, as we've already known that any process, it has four sections. So, it has an entry section, 
it has a critical section, it has exit section, and then there is the remainder section. So any process would actually have these four blocks in its uh, code. In the entry section, what we'll do is we will actually wait on the semaphore. And then once we get the key, we'll actually enter into the critical section. And finally, in the exit section, we'll have to signal the semaphore. And then the process can enter into its uh, remainder section. So this is how a general program would look like if you were to implement it using the semaphore concept. Now, let's just try to understand how this would work using whatever we have written here. So let's say we have two process, two persons uh, or two processes P1 and P2. Both are wanting to enter. Let's assume process one, he first gets hold of the key and he enters. So initially this value, uh, so key is available initially. So that means key is actually set to one, meaning the key is kind of available now. So as soon as the process P1 calls wait, so if you see wait while here it is, uh, yeah, so k value or s value is actually equal to 1 here. So is it less than or equal to 0? No. So the process won't enter in this while loop. He'll come out of this while loop and he'll decrement this to 0. And then this p1 would actually enter in the critical section. Critical section is nothing but our target in this case. And let's assume at the same time p2 also kind of wants to enter. So he'll also call wait. And now the value of S or the key is actually zero. So since this is zero, uh, this condition holds true and the process will kind of keep waiting in the busy wait loop. So P2 is inside this loop waiting for the key to be available while P1 is actually inside the critical section doing his work. And as soon as P1 is done with its work, he'll come out and in the exit section, he'll call the signal. So when the signal is called, what happens is the value of key would kind of be incremented by one. So this becomes 1 now, or S becomes 1. So when this happens, the process P2 which was waiting in this while loop now has a value which is greater than 0, which means this condition holds false and he can come out of this while loop and then finally this value again will be decremented by 1, so this becomes 0, this will also become 0 and P2 will now enter in the critical section, so now P2 will be inside. So this way, we can see that at a time, only one process will be inside the critical section and uh, there won't be any other process. So basically, uh, the concept of mutual exclusion is kind of uh, valid there. And as soon as the other process, which was waiting, uh, he gets a chance to enter, he will be allowed to enter. So the other two conditions like bounded waiting and uh, progress is also kind of handled in this case. So I think with this everyday example, we now know how uh, semaphores can actually be used to achieve process synchronization. Now whatever we've seen here is the value of the semaphore S here, it could have been either 0 or 1. So that's what we have seen here. So such a semaphore is actually called binary semaphore. Uh, so we are just looking at the types now. So this whatever we've just seen, it is a binary semaphore. Apart from binary, we also have something called counting semaphore. So there's one more called counting semaphore. Now we'll try to understand counting also, uh, maybe with an example. So let me just remove this. So let's again maybe imagine a scenario of uh, say parking lot. So let's assume there is a parking lot and inside the parking lot we have some finite number of spaces. So for now let's just assume the number of spaces is 4. So the, what, what happens in counting semaphores is instead of just 0 and 1, which was the case in binary, counting will actually be a positive value. So the semaphore would hold a non-negative or a positive value. So in this case, it will be kind of assigned to the number of resource instances which are available. So here it is 4. So the number of parking spots which are available is 4, we'll just assign the value to 4. Now, let's say whenever there is a vehicle coming in, what the vehicle will do is, so it will actually call wait on S and then finally enter into critical section, then the signal, the same code, and then finally the remainder section. Okay, any vehicle coming in, it will call wait. So we've seen that in wait, we will just reduce the value by one. Uh, okay, we had wait as this. So we will just check if it is less than or equal to zero. If yes, we will just enter in a infinite loop. 
If not, we will decrement the value. This was our weight. And then in signal, we just had to increment the value by one. So vehicle one, let's assume V1 came. So V1 came and it will call weight on S. The value of S was four. So it doesn't go inside the loop. It will come out. It will call uh, this and it will reduce the value of S by one. So this will become three. And V1 is now in the critical section. And we just let's say that V1 has come and occupied the position. So let's assume in a similar way V3, V4 and V2 also come in. So V2 comes, it will check this, this is false. So it will come and reduce this value. This becomes two. So V2 also enters in the critical section. Again, same goes with V3 and V4. These two will also kind of reduce the values by one and then finally to zero. And next time when any vehicle comes, let's say V5 comes in now. So when V5 comes, it will call wait now. And since this value holds true, V5 will have to actually wait in this loop. So it will keep busy waiting until the value of S becomes a positive value, which will happen only when one of these vehicles moves out of the parking lot. When, once they move out, they'll actually come here and call signal. As soon as, let's say now V2 came out. So V2 is out of the critical section. We have V3 and V4 still in the critical section. Now once V2 is out, it will call signal of S, which is just going to increment the value of S by one. So this becomes one now. Now V5, which is in this loop, it will actually, this condition will now become false because of which it will come out of the loop and then it will enter in the critical section here. And again, it will make this value zero so that no other vehicle can come and access uh, the critical section, which is our parking lot. So counting semaphore is a case where uh, there is a resource which has like multiple instances. How do we handle such a resource where multiple instances are kind of present? So to synchronize such a resource, uh, to have like a process synchronization, utilizing such a resources, uh, such resource where we have like multiple instances, we actually can make use of this uh, concept of uh, counting semaphore. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So in this video, we kind of understood what semaphores are. These are just some normal integer variables using which we can kind of achieve process synchronization. We also saw the two types of semaphores, the binary and counting. We also tried to understand it using some uh, everyday examples. So I guess, uh, yeah, that I hope that was uh, kind of understandable. Yeah, thank you.